Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we will be continuing looking at Chapter 8 out of Turton et al.'s textbook on estimating manufacturing costs. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on our waste treatment and utility costs and how we might estimate those. Now, utility costs can be categorized as our electrical costs. We're going to need some heating. Usually, we use process steam for that. We'll need some fuels if we're going to have a fired heater. Cooling water. If you have boilers for that steam, you need boiler feed water. You may need to blanket certain devices with inert gases. You'll have refrigeration costs, perhaps. Maybe you need to add some process water to your process. Typically, all of these combined make up about 5 to 10% of the cost of manufacturing. Now, you should be able to get information about this from the process flow diagram. The PFD should include information about what utilities are needed. You, when you look at the design portion of the course, you will have calculated those and they should again be listed on the diagram. In your textbook, there is a table that gives some typical values of how we might estimate this. Um, you do need to be aware that these are all in $2,001, so you'll need to use the SEPSI to adjust those. But the things that they include, they've got air supply. So depending on what pressure your process air or your uh, pressurized air or instrument air is, uh, you'll need to include those. Do notice that it says that you need to add 20% for instrument air because that needs to be sure that it's cleaner. You don't want particles and grit to get inside the system for pneumatic controls. Steam. We control the temperature generally by controlling the pressure. So they have pricing for low pressure, medium pressure, and high pressure. And these are priced both as dollars per gigajoule of heat or dollars per thousand kilograms of steam. We also have cooling tower water. <clears throat> This is just being cooled by air to 30 degrees C and returned from the process at 40 to 45 degrees C. And then we have water that's going to be needed for other uses. So within the process, boiler feed water, which is going to be more expensive because we're adding chemicals to that water to keep it from destroying our boilers. We need drinking water, and sometimes we're going to need deionized water. And the cost of each of these is different as reflected in this table. Electricity, it might be 110 volt, 220 volt, whatever. That price really is just going to be per kilowatt hour or per gigajoule, depending on which of these two values you're looking at. Fuels for furnaces, etc are going to be a lot of different types. And these prices probably are going to be more volatile than some of these others. Uh, but fuel oils, natural gas, coal, etc. There's many types of fuels we might consider. And then we have refrigeration. Refrigeration depends on what our temperature is we're refrigerating to. Okay. And thermal systems are going to be heating to something that we couldn't get with just steam. And then finally, not a utility, but similarly uh, evaluated, is waste disposal. Now, this is for solid and liquid waste. We have some wastes that are deemed non-hazardous, in which case we still have to process it. Okay, and that should be estimated at $36 per ton. And then we have hazardous waste. And, you know, 
know, hazards are not created equal, and so we have a fairly wide range here, $200 to $2,000 per ton. And then we have wastewater. Wastewater is going to always need to be filtered, okay? So that's primary wastewater treatment. Frequently, we're going to need to add activated sludge to remove small uh, traces of contaminants. That will cost a little bit more. Notice that this includes the filtration and the activated sludge. You don't need to say secondary filtration or secondary treatment plus primary treatment. No, no, this is both steps. Or we have the tertiary treatment, which is filtration, activated sludge for the trace elements, but also chemical processing. So maybe we need to adjust the pH, etc. So the costs are going to be reflected in this table. In the next lessons, we're going to be looking at some of these utility costs with a little bit more detail on how we might use these tables. Thank you very much.